All right, we're back with the 1968 Harley Davidson Sprint. As you guys know, I picked this thing up last video and uh, we actually got it running after it sat 30 years. Um, and it sounded pretty good. Before we ride it, we had to fix up a couple things. The gas tank was rusted out. It's all rusty in here. It's not horrible, but I do wanna put some rust solution in here. We've got some Rust-Oleum Rust Dissolver we're gonna try in the tank. At least get the bottom of it de-rusted here. I'll show you guys how bad it is in there. So this is kind of what we're dealing with. You guys saw it last video. But it's got a little rust in there. A couple big flakes down below. So what we're gonna do is just pour some of that in there and hopefully get most of that rust dissolved. Vinny, you ready for the first ride? Huh? He's like, I guess. <laughs> and then we've gotta get the throttle cable fixed. The throttle cable pulled out last video because the slide was stuck in the carb and I pulled on it a little bit too hard and uh, the wire broke, so. We got a new throttle cable kit we're gonna try to repair that today as well. Try to get that figured out. And then the horn doesn't work. I'd like to get the horn working and uh, clean this thing up a bit and then take it for the first ride. So stay tuned, should be a good video. Hopefully this will be on the road at the end of the video and we can ride this thing for the first time in 30 plus years. So we're just gonna dump this stuff, this rust is over in there. We'll see what it does to the bottom of the tank before we do anything else. Uh, let's see directions. Do, do, do. It works in three to five minutes. All right, we'll see what happens here. Hopefully it doesn't leak out. We can out of here. Doesn't look like it. Then we're gonna brush it on the uh, the cap and just see how fast it dissolves that rust in there. I think this stuff is reusable as well. Ooh, it smells bad. We'll just kind of see what that does for us. Oh, it's leaking out. Leaking out down there. that. Oh, it's leaking out of there. I guess the pet cock doesn't work. <laughs> It's just leaking out. Uh, somewhere. I'm guessing the seal's in there or something. But we'll have to take that apart once we get all the rust out of the tank. All right, now we've got the rusty gas cap here. Let's just see what it does to this. We can brush it onto the surface of it. So we're just gonna dump a little bit on there. There we go. 
We'll just let that sit through a little bit. Like I said, it's supposed to work pretty fast here, so. I think we'll just kind of help it out a little bit. It's supposed to dissolve all this stuff. there for a little bit. Let's move on to the throttle cable. We've got to get this off of it right here so we can get the new cable in there. Let's see. It was on there really loose. Okay, so that comes out. You can kind of see how that works. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look, at there's a chain in there. Huh. That just goes right into the chain. Wow, that is uh, pretty unique. You can see the chain in there. <laughs> so here is the end of it. So we just have to make it a little bit longer than that. And we should be good to go. We're gonna get our cable out of our tube here. Lay this one out right here. So this end is going to go towards the slide. This will be the end over here. Have to make it a little bit longer. It's gonna match up to the end right there because we're just gonna tie that off there. So hopefully there is one. Looks like there might be. Looks like this one right here is pretty similar. So we've got our length cut out here. You can see it's a little bit longer than the original one. We can go quite a bit longer just in case. We have to cut it again. And uh, we're gonna cut it up here. So let's just do a cut like right here. That. And we'll put this through the old one. I believe it goes this way. And then on this end, we've got this one. All right, so we actually ended up soldering on the other end by the slide. Just needs a small end, and then this end has the uh, the end on it like that. This is by the throttle um, on the hand control. All right, we got the throttle cable all hooked up. Check this out. You can see the slide in there. Moving up and down with the throttle. So that is all fixed. Throttle cable back on. Ready to go. All right, we're taking a look at the petcock now. We uh, got all the rust dissolver out of there. Pretty much just drained out of the petcock. <laughs> so, it wasn't really staying in there. Let's see what's going on with this thing. 
Ooh, yeah, she's a little crusty. Just a tad crusty in there. <laughs> there is a screen. Pretty hefty one, actually. I can see all the rust build up in there. What we might want to do is take that screen out of there. Pretty dang rusty. Alright. We'll try to open this guy up. Oh jeez. really isn't held on by anything, is it? <laughs> I think there should be threads in there. The threads obviously aren't holding. <laughs> through there with the air compressor. Let's see what's going on. I'm pretty sure the threads are stripped in here. Threads don't look stripped. Wonder if it's just too broken off to grab it. Yeah, because threads don't look too bad. Hmm. But it's not grabbing anything. So it should be grabbing in here. I think that's the wrong size. I don't think the threads are the right size for that. See that? And definitely not the right size. Huh. Well, I don't know what you do there. That sucks. I wonder if we can find a different pet cock for it to screw on there. I'll go look around in my parts bin. Alright, this must be a pretty weird size because all my other ones that I had were just a tad smaller, so. I ended up just taping this thing off. We're just gonna see if uh, that'll leak or not, but that's the best thing I could come up with until we get an extra petcock for it. But we'll see if it leaks still. I cleaned out the threads here, so we'll see. Yeah, these are these are tough to find parts for. So not much you can do. They're pretty tight. Alright, try that. Alright, so the gas lines didn't come come from up here. Got this yellow line here, quarter inch. Let's see if it's gonna be big enough. It should be perfect for it. And then we'll put a filter in here as well. Pull the gas line off. This is just the temporary one.
keep this line up a little bit. Oh, I should go right on here. Yeah, there we go. All right, and then we gotta cut that, get a filter in here. We've got a big filter. Put that guy on there to filter out all that rust. Right here. All right, filter only goes one way. Let's see. Should be an arrow on it right there. So. We just don't want it to kink, so let's see here. Cut it like right here. Should be good. At least it's not kinked. It's hard to get a filter in that small distance right there. But uh, that should work pretty well. Let's see if gas flows in there. All right, so gas isn't leaking from here, but we have a slight gas leak at the carb here. It almost looks like it's coming from Float area, almost. I don't know where that would be coming from. It's either coming from the gasket right here, or the float area. So it's leaking a little bit.
gone when it's running, so it must be the float height. Doing perfect though. I turn this off and we'll see the gas leak come back. I think. Yep, you can see the gas leak coming back right there. See that? So what we might have to do is take apart the carb again and just check that float height, because that should not be pouring out gas like that. All right, we got the slide out of the carb again. Carb off and investigate that float height. I think it's a little bit too much, unless that needle's not closing it off, which definitely could be the problem. That's on there. All right, just dump this gas out of here. Got the float area in here. Something. It's causing this thing to overflow. And I don't want to be riding it and uh, have gas be spurting everywhere and start a fire. <laughs> That's the last thing we need. So let's just see what's going on here. Is that needle not closing off? So that pushes that needle closed like that. So let's just open this up and see what that float height's at. Or maybe the float is taking on gas and causing it to be heavier than what it's supposed to be. Doesn't feel like there's any gas in the float. So that's good. Maybe the needle's getting stuck. Float height, I think you adjust these little tabs right here. So the higher they are, the sooner it turns off. So if these tabs are higher, it turns off quicker because it pushes down sooner. Let's see if that needle was getting stuck or not. No, that was that was loose in there. Hmm. I wonder if the seat uh, got a little bit of rust in there from something. I wonder if that seat's corroded out in there a little bit. I see a little gunk in there. Let me just spray that out quick. All right, there appears to still be some crud in there. So a commenter I actually left a suggestion. He said take a Q-tip, put it in the drill, and stick that down there and see if it takes off anything. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a Q-tip, stick it down the uh, the seat there and just see if it takes off any of that gunk and we'll shine that up nice and good. Alright, we're going to take our drill, Q-tip right here, shove that in there. We're gonna take a little WD-40, squirt it down here, and then we'll take the drill. Look at 
the end of the Q-tip there. Looks like we're getting some of the grime off. Just take a peek with the flashlight. It's like the perfect size for cleaning that out. Oh yeah, it's getting nice and clean now. All right, we put the car back on. And quick, get the gas line back on here. It's a loose in there. Tighten that up quick. All right, let's see if we're still leaking gas out of here. So far, so good. Is he gonna start to leak out of there? Hey, looks like we fixed it. Awesome, all right. So must have been that, that seat uh, was a little bit dirty in there. I think she's almost ready here. All right, let's see if these tires take some air. This one's a little bit flat. All right. Looks like it's taking a little bit. That's good. It's holding, I don't hear any leaking. That tire nice and good. All right, the front one looks a little bit more flat than the rear. Let's we'll see if this one holds. Yeah, that one's pretty flat. Let's see here. Oh. <laughs> it's holding. Oh yeah, she's holding. I don't think I hear anything. Look at this chain a little bit.
Well, this thing runs great. So let's go take it to the land and really test her out. See what this thing can do today. So, first ride with the GoPro. Here we go. It's been starting up right away, so we'll see how many kicks. First kick. Not too bad. So, so far it looks like it's one up for the shifting. One up and then all down, I believe. That seems like first gear to me though. Yeah, it's one up and then the rest down. I think. Go a little off-roading with this thing. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? <laughs> the cluster gauge up here is a little bit... Uh, Rattly, I would say. And having the brake on the other side is really weird. <laughs> it's like opposite of what you would normally do. And the handlebars are all crooked too, so just a little, a little tough to ride, but we're managing here. Then we're riding in sand with uh, road tires, so <laughs> that's always fun too. Okay, second gear. There's second gear right there. Cruising pretty good in second gear. A little sketchy in the sand. I keep on thinking the shifter's over here. I think that's third gear. There's second gear right there. Cruising pretty good in second gear. Kick her back up into first. We can maybe try going on the road with it. Seems pretty dependable. It's running great. Just wants to go. <laughs> oh man, that back end slipping out.
suspension's not the greatest. <laughs> Going through the field here. <laughs> I throttle stuck there for a sec. <laughs> Good thing the clutch works. Oh, there it did again. <laughs> yeah, she's a little sketchy driving it, but... It's not too bad. Let's see if I can get her in neutral here. Oh, yeah. You can see how crooked the handlebars are. <laughs> Oh, running good though. Running really good. I'm really surprised. All right, so so far for not running and driving in 30 years, it's doing great. Um, tires are holding there. Lights still work. I believe. Yep, check out the headlights still working. So everything is working. No gas leaking anywhere yet. So we fixed the carb, it's shifting into all the gears. I believe it has four, one up, three down. Yeah, I really can't complain. The slide does get stuck a little bit once in a while um, when you're really revving it out. So I think the slide in here is still a little bit tight. So it gets stuck right up here. And then it just takes a while to go back down. So we might have to sand that a little bit more. But other than that, it's been, it's been great. It's been starting up right away. up gotta make sure there's no cars coming especially with the throttle sticking the way it does good thing the clutch works guys <laughs> that would uh that'd be a bad situation I'm not going to go too crazy on it, the tires are all dry rotted so it's already sketchy enough. Speedo says we're going 20. I don't know if that's accurate or not, it might be. Yeah, 25 right there. So Speedo is kind of working, tack is all over the place. Says we're revving at like 3,000 RPM right now. It might be right. We're gonna wait for no cars to be coming.
Right now it's pretty good actually. One down. Cars came up fast behind me. It appears like we're missing a uh, third gear here. third gear there we go going 50 pretty good Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. there's fourth there we go oh yeah all gears are there just a little sketchy <laughs> Idle seems to go up when you go into the gears. Alright, we did the road test. Goes through all the gears. I'm not going faster than that on this thing. It's already so sketchy. <laughs> With the handlebars being crooked, just really hard to control. <laughs> well, I'm pretty happy with this thing. This is not bad. If we get the uh, the slide to unstick and high RPM. And, uh, and we get this cluster gauge to not rattle so much and the handlebar straightened out I think it would be a road bike road worthy bike I'd actually register it and ride it it's fast enough it's not, not too bad I kind of like it <laughs> gears, first gear is geared pretty well for it to be a street bike but Idle's a little high. <laughs> yeah, she's not bad. Not bad for the first first ride in 30 plus years. I'm uh I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's holding up pretty good. Well, first road ride went really well. Went through all the gears, we hit fourth gear on the road. A little sketchy with the tires all dry rotted like they are and then the uh, <laughs> and the handlebars all crooked and then the sticking throttle you can see it sticks I see it stuck right there <laughs> so a little bit sketchy but wasn't too bad so first ride on this thing is completed and probably couldn't have gone better it's Starting like first kick every time, super reliable. So it's 
pretty nice bike. Thanks to everyone that left the comments on the last videos, helped me out with this thing. Lots of people were interested in this thing, and it seemed like a lot of people had this bike back in the day and really liked it a lot. So hopefully I could bring back some memories for you guys and uh, hopefully learn something on this thing. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one. And until next time, we are out.